Beirut Rafik Hariri International Airport Arabic Mtar Beirut Arfik Al Hariri Aldli Matar Beirut Rafik Al Hariri Adwali French Aeroport International de Beirut IATA Bay ICAO OLBA Formerly Beirut International Airport is located 9 kilometers 5.6 miles from the city center in the southern suburbs of Beirut Lebanon and is the only operational commercial airport in the country it is the hub for Lebanon's national carrier, Middle East Airlines more commonly known as Maya. It is also the hub for the Lebanese cargo carrier Trans-Mediterranean Airways more commonly known as TMA Cargo, as well as Wings of Lebanon. It is the main port of entry into the country along with the port of Beirut. The airport is managed and operated by the Directorate General of Civil Aviation DGCA, which operates within the Ministry of Public Works and Transport. The DGCA is also responsible for operating the Air Traffic Control ATC at the airport as well as controlling Lebanon's airspace. Maintenance and general upkeep duties ranging from cleaning the terminal to derubberizing the runways are the responsibility of Middle East Airport Services MEAS, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of the national carrier, Middle East Airlines. There are plans to eventually replace the Directorate General of Civil Aviation DGCA with an independent autonomous government-owned agency called the Lebanese Civil Aviation Authority LCAA, which would assume the responsibilities of regulation and safety oversight while a new government-owned corporation named the Beirut Rafik Hariri International Airport Corporation BRHIAC would assume management and operations responsibilities of the airport. History The airport opened on 23 April 1954, replacing the much smaller Bir Hassan airfield which was located a short distance north. At the time of its opening, the terminal was very modern and it featured an excellent spotter's terrace with a café. The airport consisted of two asphalt runways at the time. Runway 1836 at 3,250 meters (10,663 feet) was used primarily for landings from the 18 end, while runway 03, 21 at 3,180 meters (10,433 feet) was used primarily for takeoffs from the 21 end and from the Sami end. Topic: <laughs> Premier Middle East Hub. The airport grew to become a premier hub in the Middle East, thanks to limited competition from neighbors, with fast and steady growth by the country's four carriers at the time, Middle East Airlines Maya, Air Liban, Trans-Mediterranean Airways TMA, and Lebanese International Airways LIA, and numerous other foreign carriers. <laughs> Israeli assault In response to an attack on El Al Flight 253 two days earlier in Athens, on the night of 28 December 1968, Israeli commandos mounted a surprise attack on the airport and destroyed 14 civilian aircraft operated by the Lebanese carriers. Middle East Airlines Air Liban had merged with Maya by this time, Trans Mediterranean Airways, and Lebanese International Airways. This caused serious devastation to the Lebanese aviation industry. Middle East Airlines managed to rebound quickly, but Lebanese International Airways went bankrupt and its employees were transferred to Maya. <inaudible> <inaudible> Lebanese Civil War The airport lost its status as one of the premier hubs of the Middle East with the start of the 15-year-long Lebanese Civil War in April 1975 and lost virtually all of its airline services with the exception of two Lebanese carriers, Middle East Airlines and Trans-Mediterranean Airways. Both airlines continued operating with the exception of certain periods of time when the airport itself was completely closed. Despite the conflict, the terminal was renovated in 1977, only to be badly damaged five years later by Israeli shelling during the 1982 Israeli invasion of Lebanon. The airport was the site of the 1983 Beirut barracks bombing, in which 241 American servicemen were killed. The airport's runways were renovated in 1982 and 1984. Reconstruction 
By the time war finally came to an end in 1990, the airport needed to launch a massive reconstruction program. A 10-year reconstruction program was launched in 1994 which included the construction of another terminal, two runways, a fire station, a power plant, a general aviation terminal, and an underground parking garage. Many structures, like the radar building, were rehabilitated. In 1998 the first phase of the new terminal was completed. It was located immediately adjacent to the east of the old terminal and consists of gates 1-12. After it was inaugurated, the old terminal was demolished and construction on the western half began and was completed in 2000, however it was not inaugurated until 2002. This consists of gates 13 to 23. The new terminal can handle 6 million passengers annually and is expected to be expanded to handle 16 million passengers by 2035. It was decided early on that the original runways were no longer sufficient. A new landing runway, 1735 was constructed protruding at an angle out into the sea, with a length of 3,395 meters 11,138 feet. This seaward protrusion was built in order to move landing traffic away from the city in a bid to improve safety and reduce aircraft noise. A new takeoff runway was constructed parallel to the old 0321 at a length of 3,800 meters 12,467 feet making it the longest runway in the airport. The old 0321 was converted to a taxiway for accessing the new runway 0321. Unlike the old runways, the two new runways were constructed from concrete and feature more advanced lighting systems and instrument landing systems. In 2004, runway 1735 was redesignated 1634 and runway 1836 was redesignated 1735 after more accurate runway heading measurements were conducted. Despite being essentially replaced by and adjacent to the new runway 1634, runway 1735 is still open, although it is rarely used. On the 17th of June 2005, the General Aviation Terminal was finally opened. It is located on the northwestern corner of the airport. All fixed base operators and VIP charter providers have moved their operations to this state-of-the-art terminal. In 2005, the airport was renamed from Beirut International Airport to Beirut Rafik Hariri International Airport in honor of former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafik Hariri, who was assassinated earlier in the year. Topic. More damage during the 2006 war On 13 July 2006 at approximately 6 a.m. local time, all three runways of the airport sustained significant damage from missile strikes directed at it by the Israeli Air Force as part of the 2006 Lebanon War. The Israeli Air Force claimed that the airport was a military target because Hezbollah was receiving weapons shipments there. The runways were rendered inoperative and the Lebanese government declared that the airport was closed until further notice. Shortly thereafter, Maya used one of the long taxiways at the airport to evacuate five of its aircraft, four Airbus A321 and one Airbus A330. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Limited activity at the airport. The airport reopened to commercial flights on 17 August 2006, with the arrival of a Middle East Airlines Maya flight around 1.10 p.m. local time from Amman, followed by a Royal Jordanian flight also from Amman. This marked the first commercial flight arrival at Beirut International Airport since the airport's closure almost five weeks before. All runways and taxiways at the airport have been successfully repaired and the airport is operating as it was before the hostilities. Topic. Israel ends air blockade On 7 September 2006, Israel ended its air blockade of Lebanon. The first plane to land at the airport after the end of the blockade was a Middle East Airlines flight at 6.06 .06 p.m. local time. Soon after that, a Kuwait Airways flight landed at the airport. Over the next couple of days, more airlines resumed flights to the airport, including Emirates, Etihad, Jazeera Airways, Air Arabia, Air France, British Airways BMED, Cyprus Airways, Egypt Air, Air Algerie, Royal Air Maroc, Jet Airways, and Gulf Air. Topic: 
U.S. air traffic ban amended On 6 June 2007, U.S. President George W. Bush amended a ban on air traffic to Lebanon imposed since the 1985 hijacking of TWA Flight 847 to allow flights by the U.S. government. A press release issued by the White House said that the prohibition of transportation services to Lebanon less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 is hereby further amended to permit U.S. air carriers under contract to the United States government to engage in foreign air transportation to and from Lebanon of passengers, including U.S. and non-U.S. citizens, and their accompanying baggage, of goods for humanitarian purposes, and of any other cargo or materiel. First Airbus A380 flight On 29 March 2018, Emirates operated a one-off Airbus A380 service to Beirut. It was a trial flight in order to test the airport's handling of the aircraft. The aircraft parked at Gate 1, which is capable of handling the Airbus A380. This marked the first time the A380 had landed in Lebanon. Passenger terminal The terminal consists of two wings, the east and west wing, joined together by the main terminal, forming a U-shaped building, with each wing being parallel to the other, and the main terminal connecting the wings. The modern terminal consists of 23 gates, 19 of which have jetways, two of which are dual jetway gates for large aircraft, and two are bus gates which have been decommissioned. Smoking is prohibited in almost all areas inside the terminal, with a few exceptions see east and west wing section below. Main terminal The main terminal includes the bulk of the duty-free, some other shops, a restaurant, and the lounges. The main terminal has four levels. The ground level, which features the arrival area, and also contains a duty-free section for arriving passengers next to baggage claim. The duty-free shops and baggage area are accessible to arriving passengers after they clear passport control, but before they clear customs this duty-free, like all the others, is not open to the general public. The general public has access to the waiting area, and there are various cafes and restaurants open to the public. The second level, features the departure level, security checkpoint, ticketing, customs, and immigration. It also includes the primary duty-free shopping area, which is only accessible to ticketed passengers once they clear immigration. There is also a second security checkpoint passengers must pass through before accessing each separate wing. The third level, which houses all of the private airline lounges, prayer rooms, as well as a restaurant with a nice view on the tarmac. The fourth level, which is closed to the public and passengers, mainly houses the airport administration offices. East and West Wing Each wing contains its own departure gates, as well as two cafes one of which features a smoking section, a newsstand, a tourism shop, and smaller duty-free shopping areas in each wing. The East Wing, which opened in 1998, has gates 1-12 and the West Wing, which opened in 2002, has gates 13-23. Gates 2 and 3 are dual jetway gates for large aircraft. Gates 4 and 22 are bus boarding gates, however these are almost never used. The only way to move from one wing to the next is through the main terminal. <laughs> Passenger services. The airport also includes banks, a post office, prayer rooms, and a tourist information center managed by the Ministry of Tourism. There is Wi-Fi throughout the airport, but it is only free for the first 30 minutes used. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Lounges. All of the lounges except for the Qatar Airways lounge are also priority pass lounges. Cedar Lounge, owned and operated by Middle East Airlines. It occupies half of the available lounge space at the airport. 
The Cedar Lounge opened on 1 August 2005, and was refurbished in 2017, and extends over an area of 3,000 square meters, with a maximum capacity of 300 seated passengers. The lounge has various seating areas, an enclosed smoking area, a business center, a children's play area, a bar, and a self-service cafeteria. It is open to MAYA passengers with business class tickets, and to first and business class ticket holders from select airlines, including but not limited to Air France, Emirates, Kuwait Airways, Alitalia, Qatar Airways and Saudia. Beirut Lounge, operated by Middle East Airlines. Open to their credit card holders and premium passengers of Lufthansa, Aegean Airlines, and others. Lot Lounge, operated by the ground handler Lebanese Air Transport. Open to most other airlines premium passengers that are not allowed into the Cedar Lounge, including but not limited to British Airways, Iran Air, Aeroflot, Air Serbia, Tarim, Fly Dubai, Turkish Airlines and Ethiopian Airlines. Qatar Airways operates its own lounge at the airport on level 1. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Airlines and Destinations. Topic Passenger Topic Cargo Topic Statistics Passenger use and aircraft movements have increased each year since 1990 with the exception of 2006, which saw a sharp decrease in both. Total cargo has trended upwards since 1990 but also experienced a significant decrease in 2006. <laughs> Ground transport The airport has a three-level car park with a total capacity 2,350 cars. Public transportation to the airport does not exist, except for taxis. These tend to be more expensive than regular service taxis, however. LCC Bus Route 1 takes passengers from the airport roundabout, which is located one kilometer from the terminal, to Rue Sadat in Hamra, whereas Route 5 takes to the Charles Hello bus station. OCFTC buses number 7 and 10 also stop at the airport roundabout, en route to central Beirut. <inaudible> <inaudible> airport services Ground handling providers The airport has two three ground handling operators, Middle East Airlines Ground Handling MIG, Lebanese Air Transport LOT, and Trans Mediterranean Airways TMA. Middle East Airlines Ground Handling MIG, is a wholly owned subsidiary of the national carrier, MEA. It provides ground handling services for the national carrier, MEA, as well as most of the carriers serving the airport, including the cargo carriers. MIG handles nearly 80% of the traffic at the airport. Lebanese Air Transport LOT is a smaller ground handling operator that conducts ground handling operations for a number of carriers serving the airport. LOT specializes in handling charter flights, but do have contracts with a number of scheduled carriers such as British Airways. Once upon a time, LOT was an airline that operated its own aircraft, however this was many years ago. Topic fixed base operators The airport is home to four fixed base operators FBOs for private aircraft. MIG recently launched its own FBO services with the opening of the new general aviation terminal called the Cedar Jet Center, now regarded as the airport's top FBO. Another leading FBO is Aircraft Support and Services, which specializes in fixed base operator services for private and executive aircraft. In addition, they operate two executive jets that can be chartered to various places. Junior Executive operates a fleet of small propeller aircraft that can be chartered or leased. They also have a flight school. They also conduct light maintenance on light aircraft and also offer fixed-based operator services. Cirrus Middle East, a member of the German Cirrus Group, is partnering up with Universal Weather and Aviation to create a fixed base operator and VIP charter service to be launched on 15 October 2012. 
The company will initially be called Universal, Cirrus Middle East, but will eventually become Universal Aviation Beirut. They aim to become one of the top FBOs in the Middle East and will cater aircraft as large as Boeing 747s. LOT offers limited fixed base operator services for private and executive aircraft. Executive Aircraft Services offers aircraft charter services, ground handling services, aircraft management, and aircraft acquisition and sales. Aircraft maintenance providers The airport is the home base of Mideast Aircraft Services Company Masco, an aircraft maintenance provider that specializes in Airbus maintenance, particularly the A320 and A330 series. It is a wholly owned subsidiary of the national carrier, Maya. Masco has JAR 145 approval and as a result can maintain any aircraft registered in Europe. Other facilities. Middle East Airlines has its corporate headquarters and training center at Beirut Airport. Topic: <inaudible> Accidents and Incidents. On the 21st of November 1959, Ariana Afghan Airlines flight 202 crashed near Beirut on a flight from Beirut to Tehran, killing 24 of the 27 passengers and crew on board the Douglas DC-4. On 23 February 1964, Vickers Viscount Su AKX of United Arab Airlines was damaged beyond economic repair in a heavy landing. On 30 September 1975 a Tupolev Tu-154 of Malev Hungarian Airlines, Malev Flight 240 crashed into the sea while approaching the airport. The cause and the circumstances remain mysterious, but it was most likely shot down. In September 1970, Pan Am Flight 93 was hijacked while flying to New York. The plane landed to refuel and pick up another PFLP hijacker. It was then flown to Cairo where it was blown up. On 17 May 1977 Antonov N-12, SPLZA, a cargo plane leased by LOT Polish Airlines from the Polish Air Force along with its crew, flying to Lebanon with a cargo of fresh strawberries crashed 8 km from Beirut Airport, all six crew members and three passengers on board were killed. The airplane crashed due to language problems, the crew repeated the order to descend given by the air traffic control and flew into a mountain. On 23 July 1979, a TMA Boeing 707-320C, on a test flight for four co-pilots due to be promoted to captains, crashed whilst on a third touch and go. The plane touched down but then yawed right to left to right again before the wing clipped the ground causing the plane to flip and come to rest inverted across a taxiway. All six crew members were killed. On 8 January 1987, Middle East Airlines Boeing 707-323 CODAHB was destroyed by shelling after landing. On 25 January 2010, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 409, bound for Addis Ababa, Ethiopia and carrying 90 passengers of which 54 were Lebanese crashed into the Mediterranean Sea shortly after takeoff, killing everyone on board. See also Lebanese identity card Lebanese passport List of airports in Lebanon Transport in Lebanon Visa policy of Lebanon Visa requirements for Lebanese citizens <laughs>